Howdy y'all, welcome back to our fifth grade science series. Today I'm so excited. We get to start life sciences. So you might make a separate section in your science notebook titled life sciences. It's one of my favorites. So we'll talk about organisms and how they obtain their food and their energy. We'll talk about plants and photosynthesis and animals too, how they get their food and energy. So let's do it. Science rocks. Eek, life sciences. I'm so excited. All right, so get out that science notebook, whether it's online, open that up, or if it's in a notebook, get that out. Let's get ready to take notes and draw pictures as you follow along. So go ahead and copy down these 18 vocab words. Remember, they go in ABC order like this. And just come back later and create your own definitions of these words. So go ahead and pause it if you need to finish writing down the words. So plants need five things to grow and to live, all right? They need sunlight, water, minerals, air, and space, all right? So sunlight. Plants get energy from the sun. Chlorophyll, which is found in plant leaves, uses the sunlight to change materials in water and in air into food, all right? So this process is called photosynthesis, all right? Photosynthesis, okay? And so that's sunlight, right? And the green stuff um, that converts uh, all of that sunlight energy and water and air into food um, is the chlorophyll, Okay, and it happens in the leaf of a plant. It's called photosynthesis. All right, and then water. Okay, plants must have water because it helps carry nutrients from the soil, okay, to the plant's roots. So the roots suck up the water from the soil. And plants need water to complete photosynthesis. Plants need water to complete photosynthesis. And then you have these minerals that are in the soil. And some of these minerals will help the plant grow. Okay. And you have air. Okay. Our air around us provides something called carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, which is a material that plants use for photosynthesis. Okay, so during photosynthesis, plants take in this carbon dioxide from the air and plants release oxygen. Okay, so let me say that again. Plants take in carbon dioxide from the air and they release oxygen. All right, so let's think about that as a human. Okay, we breathe out carbon dioxide. We are putting that carbon dioxide into the air, okay? And what do we breathe in? Oxygen. We breathe in oxygen. We breathe in the stuff that plants release during photosynthesis. So thank you, plants and trees, all right? And then space. Plants also need space to grow. If there are too many plants for the amount of sunlight, soil, minerals, or space, some of those plants would not survive. So if you look at a basic equation of photosynthesis, like what a plant needs um, to do photosynthesis, and during that process of photosynthesis, what is produced, okay? So a plant needs water. That's number two on our list, right? Plant needs water. And a plant needs carbon dioxide, okay? That's the air we talked about, number four. It's part of the air we talked about. So a plant needs carbon dioxide. And remember we talked about that's the stuff that humans actually breathe out. So we're giving that to the plant. The plant needs that, okay? And it's with the help of sunlight energy, Okay, here's the sunlight energy. There we go. It's going to yield or produce. That's what this arrow is. Okay, so if a plant has water and if a plant has carbon dioxide from the air and if a plant has sunlight, it's going to produce 
um, that oxygen that we talked about, plus like this food for the plant. And we're going to call the food for the plant, like what helps it grow, we'll just call it sugar. Okay, it's a sugar for the plant. Okay, sugar plus the oxygen. Oxygen. Running out of space. That's an E N. Okay, so if a plant has water, if it has carbon dioxide, if it has sunlight, it can produce sugar, which is like food for the plant, and it can release oxygen gas. Okay, which is awesome because that's what we breathe. So I love this picture. It uh, helps it make a little bit more sense. So through this process of photosynthesis, plants make sugar particles that they use for food. Okay, so to make those particles, they use water, okay, which let's say it rained or you watered the plant so it's down in the soil and the roots are going to suck up that water. Okay, they use carbon dioxide gas from the air. Remember, we breathe out carbon dioxide, and you can get it in other ways from the air. And energy from the sunlight, okay? And plants get the water they need um, by absorbing it through their roots, like I said. They get the air by taking it in through these little tiny holes in their leaves and in the stems, Okay, and plants get energy from the sunlight when sunlight falls onto their leaves and it's absorbed by that green pigment called chlorophyll that I talked about in the leaves. All right, so let's talk about living organisms and food. Okay, so food contains stored energy that can be released by an animal's body when the animal eats it. So anything an animal eats or drinks that gives the animal energy is food for that animal. So animals have to eat the right food to get energy out of it. So for example, wood is not very nutritious for humans, but it is nutritious for termites, right, and other types of insects. Uh, plants. Plants can make their own food from sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide gas that we've just talked about. And remember that process is called photosynthesis. Okay, so when animals eat plants, the sun's energy, which was changed into a different form of energy and was stored in those plants' tissues, it's passed along to the animals. So when animals eat plants, the sun's energy, okay, that was transformed, is passed along to the animals. So food provides energy for both plants and animals. They use this energy to perform life functions such as even breathing, moving, eating, reproducing, growing, repairing, and even sleeping. We need energy. We use energy. So if animals eat more food than they need, the extra food is stored as fat until they need it. And if plants make more food or sugar than they need, the rest is also stored for later use. So carrot plants, for example, here we go. Carrot plants store extra food in their bright orange roots. Okay, remember in carrots, the orange part goes underground. So the orange part, um, that's their roots. So food provides raw materials for growth and repair. Plants may use materials from their food to build more stems, maybe more leaves, uh, roots. Animals use some of the materials they get from food to build more body structures, okay, such as skin or bone or muscle. So this allows them to grow and to repair parts that have been hurt or that are damaged. And not everything that an animal eats can be used as food. So most foods contain at least a little material that the body cannot break down and use as helpful food. So this may be like the seeds of fruits, okay, or maybe fibers in certain plants, okay. So the body simply eliminates the parts that cannot be digested and used for energy, 
All right, once again, please take the time to watch these three other videos and take more notes as you're following along. Practice question time. Number one, all life on earth receives energy from plants. So how do plants receive energy? All right, so pause it, look at your answer choices and see what you think. Okay, so plants receive energy from the sun, if you've been listening. So C, from the sun. They are then able to make their own food. Remember, photosynthesis. So all living organisms either consume plants, eat plants, or consume other organisms that eat plants. Okay, so in turn, they receive some energy from the plants that was originally from the sun. Number two, all living organisms must take in energy in order to grow and survive. So for animals, this energy comes from what? So pause it and see what you think. Okay, animals get the energy they need from what? From food they eat. Okay, so every living thing, every living organism needs energy to perform even the basic processes of life, like growing, repairing, reproducing. Number three, in which of the following places could a plant most likely live and grow? Okay, so pause it, look at your choices, see what you think. All right, so plants need what? Plants need air. Remember the carbon dioxide. They need water, okay? Um, let's say, you know, they need sunlight, okay? And then they're going to produce, remember, the food, the sugar, and the oxygen gas. So a plant would most likely live and grow in a sunny place that gets lots of rain. A plant needs sunlight, a plant needs water. All right, so we're going to go with D. Plants cannot grow well in places with no sunlight and no water. All right, number four. I put this one on here because it has a picture of a food web that we need to talk about. So the arrows right here, the arrows in the food web show the direction in which energy flows. Okay, so the food web is blank. It shows that all the blank animals get by eating other organisms come from the sun. Okay, so let's just look at the food web for a second. Okay, it's going to start over here at the sun. And how you read a food web, um, a food chain would be one um, of these in the food web. So a food web is consist consisted of two or more food chains. Okay, an example of a food chain within this food web would be the energy from the sun is transferred to the grass. The energy from the grass is transferred to the wombat. The energy from the wombat is transfer transferred to the dingo. Okay, because the dingo eats the wombat, so it gets that energy. The wombat eats the grass, so it gets that energy. Okay, and the grass sucks up the sunlight energy. Okay, and right here you'll find the second food chain within this food web. Okay, so our first question is the food web is blank. All right, so is a food web an experiment or is a food web a model? Okay, well, we're showing you a picture representation of this food web, and it's showing you what eats what and in what direction the energy flows. Okay, so we're not conducting any sort of experiment. We're showing you a picture of what happens. Okay, so that's going to be a model. So we can cross off A and C. Okay, and our next question is, so we've got a food web. The food web is a model, and then we have... So it, the model, the food web, it shows that all the animals, excuse me, it shows that all the energy animals get by eating other organisms comes from the sun, or it shows that all the light 
animals get by eating other organisms comes from the sun. So what are we concerned about getting? Are we concerned about getting light for all of these organisms? Or are we concerned about getting energy for all of these organisms? Okay, we're concerned about getting energy. So we're going to go with B. Okay, so both plants and animals use this energy that they get from the sun for growth and repair and so many things. Animals also use that energy to move, keep warm, so many things. Okay, so the food web is a model. It shows that all the energy animals get by eating other organisms comes from the sun originally. Okay, so if you paid attention to number four, you should get number five. Number five, the ultimate source of energy for almost all living organisms is what? It's the sun. Okay, the ultimate source of energy is the sun. Um, in the process of photosynthesis, remember plants absorb that light energy from the sun and store that energy in these bonds and the sugar that it produces. So this energy is transferred to other organisms as consumers, these animals that eat, okay, that feed upon the plants, all right? So that ultimate source of energy comes from the sun. All right, after fully mastering this topic, you should be able to create a project, a presentation, an experiment, maybe a, maybe a model, okay? Because look at this. Use models to describe that energy in animals' food, okay, used for body repair, growth, motion, and to maintain body warmth, et cetera, et cetera, was once energy from the sun, all right, support an argument that plants get the materials they need for growth chiefly from air and water.